Testing, testing. So, I've been uh, working on my audio last several videos. I keep explaining this every time I do one of these. I just had like a weird hiss, not hiss, like a type sound underneath. I think partially it's the electricity in the building. I got a power conditioner. It's on its way. It should be here in a day or two. But for now, I got everything on a kind of like a cheap regular power strip. So the difference being that regulates the voltage and all kinds of stuff. This just keeps it from... You know, but at least it's all in the same circuit, so I shouldn't have any weird grounding issues, and that's a thing that's definitely gonna make noise. You might be hearing a noise right now, but that's just my heater. It's freaking freezing in here. <laughs> um, anyway, though, uh, this is original Christian rock. I come up with a song, and the purpose of this, these videos is just to show you how I piece everything together. I usually come up with a guitar riff first, and then I just kind of start going from there. So I grab my uh, Steinberger. I haven't used it in a little while, at least not on one of these. I came up with a riff. It's a pretty simple one. It's in E major. It goes like this. <laughs> That's part one. That's part two of the verse. The chorus is just gonna be. I'll probably layer it all up with overdubs just to make it sound good. <laughs> um, but I'm using these uh, nine chords that I love using. So it's just root, fifth, ninth. With the overdubs, I'll fill in the rest of the chords and uh, add some extra parts, make it sound a little more interesting. That's the rough idea. I got a drum loop going, which is going to be used for a metronome until I replace this drum loop with an actual part that I play on the kit behind me. That's pretty much it. So I'll get going. I'm uh, cutting off like the input monitoring on my uh, mic or my guitar, depending, which actually the guitar is on right now. Well, I'm going to show you this anyway. So, yeah, I'm just going to double that part again. But since I have this new interface, it seems to be a lot more sensitive to the mic and whatnot, like with this preamp in it. And uh, the last one, I could get away with just leaving this thing on, but it seems like it picks up too much and just squashes the sound when I leave this on. So I got to remember to turn the input monitoring on this mic off and like have the guitar go. So yeah, it's a whole thing, but whatever. I'm going to record the right side. I'm going to do the exact same thing. And uh, then I'll start deciding if I want to do overdubs, which probably, especially in the chorus, but here goes the right side. Okay, so I think I'm gonna do a bit of a lead part for an overdub. I'm gonna do some more lead stuff on the other side. I'm thinking harmonics. Like that in the verse, just randomly, I'll kind of improvise around it. And then when I get to the chorus, I'm going to fatten up the chords by doing like this octave run. It's... Now comes the guitar solo. I'm just gonna do something in E major. The bass part's up next. Ugh, my pants are falling. <laughs> So 
the drums are up next. Uh, I just deleted the drum loop, turned up the metronome. Sounds like this. So I have to play to that, and uh, I'm gonna do it on the kit behind me. So wish me luck. Here we go. I typed some lyrics, I did a scratch track, which is just me practicing and warming up and trying out the vocals. I turned off the heater so I don't have any extra noise in the background, and I'm going to try and record this quick so it doesn't get freezing cold in here <laughs> really fast. Alright, so I just finished up the vocals. I don't feel like doing any harmonies, so I sang right through. The lyrics are in the description box. I'm always talking about my Christian faith, so if you're wondering, that's what it's about. I view my music as a way to say thanks and give praise to God. Right above it, Linktree link. Click on it. You can purchase and stream my music. Like, if you go there, it's a bunch of websites like Amazon, iTunes, Spotify, etc. It's good stuff. Check it out. I got a whole bunch of music. Literally, like, over 24 hours worth, I think, at this point. I write every day, so. Above that, you're going to see PastorMelissaScott.com. That's a church in Glendale, California, called Faith Center, and pastored by Pastor Melissa Scott. She took over from her late husband, Dr. Gene Scott. And the reason I put that there, as a Christian, I know it's really hard to find good Bible teaching that's super accurate, and a lot of people have denominational skews, agendas, and various things, and it's really hard to suss out what is actually true teaching and which is nonsense. I'm stealing this from someone else, but discernment is knowing the difference between right and almost right, not knowing the dis difference between right and wrong. Anyone can do that, but right and almost right, and that's the thing. A lot of people are almost right, but they are trying to skew things towards their viewpoint. But when you're looking at the Bible, you have to view things from what it's actually trying to convey. So if you follow that link, they do a lot of translations from the original languages, which helps because then you know what the writers are actually trying to say. And unlike people that are like, oh, I'm doing this and this and this, they actually know the languages <laughs> for real, not pretending. And the thing is, with it not having like an agenda or anything, the fake teaching, no matter how legit it seems, if it has anything in any way towards like, some sort of like make yourself better and more presentable condemning certain groups of people versus other groups of people because they do a b and c and not because of their faith in jesus but yeah like any kind of humanitarian things focused on the self focused on the world focused on anything except for god giving us unmerited favor, which that's what grace is and us being saved by having faith in jesus as the messiah that's it. Anything else, it's garbage. Like I said, grace is unmerited favor. So the people that are telling you, you have to do certain things, act certain ways, dress certain ways, say certain things, do whatever, they're not getting that. It's unmerited. We don't earn it because none of us are worthy. None of us are righteous. Our righteousness is as dirty rags. So if you think you have to meet some standard or you've done something that's too bad, that's incorrect. Grace is unmerited favor. How are you saved? God calls out to you. If you're interested in any way, God has probably called out to you. So God does the choosing. It's prevenient grace. Once God calls out to you and you hear the word, that's how faith comes. Now faith, once you're hearing the word, is action. Uh, I'm going to screw this up unless I think about it. <laughs> action um, based upon belief, sustained by confidence. Faith is an action verb in the original language. Hebrew and Greek, it's sort of the same thing, but it's a verb, it's action, it's ongoing and continuous. You ongoing and continuously faith 
force it into a verb, and that helps. So you're fathing, and yes, I'm taking this right from their teaching, but it's fathing, ongoing and continuous, because pistis is faith in Greek. So when Paul is writing in Romans that we are saved by faith and we're sealed with the Holy Spirit, we're sealed with the Holy Spirit as long as we continue faithing. It's not a one-time action. It is ongoing and continuous. You keep faithing. It's a connection to God. You have to keep plugged in for the power to be flowing. If you unplug, you disconnect. So that's it. Faith. That's how you're saved. You keep faithing. God gives you grace, unmerited favor. Nothing else is going to cut it. Trying to live by a certain standard or a rule set, you're going back to the law. You're going back to legalism. And the thing is, none of us can live up to the law. The point of the law is just to show us how far short we fall. It is a curse on us. The law means death, but grace and God's unmerited favor means life. Jesus took on our punishment. He came, He became the law for us, and he died on that cross. The law died on that cross. So Jesus in the resurrected form is now giving us grace. God gives us grace because of what Jesus did. We slide out from under the law. That's all it is. So unmerited, you don't earn it. Nothing you do can earn it. The only thing we can do is trust what God did. But God wants us to trust him. He wants us to faith, be faithing in him continuously because it's like a relationship with God. So in this relationship based on faith, trust, and love, which you would want in any relationship, you continue having that faith in God, knowing that he keeps his promises. His word is absolute. It's 100% true. And that's it. So you keep faithing. God changes you. And how does he change you? He gives you the Holy Spirit as long as you keep faithing and you have that power connection of the faith plugged in. God's action is what changes us inside. So we're changed by the power of God. And it's not something that people are going to expect. It's not what you're going to expect, but you're going to get certain things that are going to start to come out of you. And you won't even like realize it's happening, but you're just going to become more loving in the true sense, which is agape in Greek. If you're interested, go look it up or just follow the link for the teaching on it. And you're going to probably become more giving, more forget, more forgiving. And uh, giving is actually played down too by a lot of churches nowadays. And it kind of has been for the last 2,000 years. But Jesus made a pretty big deal out of giving. So did Paul in his writing and so did the other apostles. Giving is super important to God because we've received this gift as we take on the traits of Jesus, we should become givers as well. And I don't mean like in a fake sense, like you give to get type thing. It is seen as like the burnt offering in the New Testament. So when these people receive the Holy Spirit, say like the Macedonian Christians, they are giving out of their deep poverty expecting nothing in return. But he admonishes like the Corinthians who are all puffed up in their spiritual gifts and just looking at themselves. It's like a sense of selflessness. You give not expecting anything in, re in return. And the paradox is then God does give back to you, but it's not talking about like in this world. It says lay up tre treasures in heaven. So you're not going to get in this world. It's not guaranteed. It's in the next. But if you give to get like you're investing, you're missing the point. It's a paradox. You're completely being selfless in it. You're a giver. You forgive people and you have love. That's it. So it's only by faith that you're saved and uh, God will give you the Holy Spirit and you'll start to get these qualities. So the gifts of the Spirit, that's kind of more like along the lines of what it is. People make it into a call. All kind of weird, like stupid, ridiculous things that I've seen and I'm like face palming and rolling my eyes at some things I've seen, but that's what it is. Anyway, I'll let you go. Check out the link. Great teaching. And subscribe, like, comment, share. I'm going to turn my heat back on because it's getting cold in here. So see you later.